Welcome guys, we've got ABL Series, we are here, Game 2, Team Fish Tacos, No Fear Esports, we've got No Fear Esports up 1-0 in the set, looking to take this for a 2-0 sweep, looking to see if Team Fish Tacos can pull out the 1-1 and take us to Game 3, we're already in picks and bands, we are back here, I'm Skyson, here with my boy Swift, take us through the picks. My friend might be muted, it doesn't matter, I've got you covered, yes, we've got... Damn. You already know what it is. Two times in a row, but we're back at it. Nidalee and Kindred picked up as bans coming in from No Fear Esports and Team Fish Tacos. Banning out the Iron and the Aurelian Soul. Aurelian Soul, obviously, last game put in quite a bit of work once the mid to late game hit. And then Kindred as well put in work from Team Fish Tacos as that is how they got their early game leads. Last but not least in the bands, we got Mordekaiser and Karma, both incredibly strong picks, and one that was played previously in Karma, and then Aatrox, first pick. Take it yeah. pretty strong. Karma getting out of here and decided they did not want to deal with the shields, also did not want to deal with the destructive amount of control that Aurelian Soul brought uh, from the side of Warhog, so we're going to see the Aatrox instead come. Yeah, next up we have the Aatrox come in not that bad of a pick he was left up open and you can flex him either mid or even top lane and you probably get the same results pretty strong as far as that reset goes once his team fight breaks out if he has any sort of a lead and that reset starts that team fight's pretty much his then next they pick up Renekton and so 20 being covered Renekton potentially going to be picked into that Aatrox and wouldn't be surprised he is a decent pick into him just having that mobility with his E, he can definitely dodge out of the way from his Q sweet spots. And then Sivir picked up from Team Fish Tacos, which is not that bad of an A carry. Can definitely just shove in waves and perma shove and just have that extra movement speed to get the rest of her team onto the into a team fight if need be. Yeah, having the Sivir availability, you know, taking that back off the board since that's not going to be banned out. They did take the Kindred instead, so they're going to immediately grab the Sivir. You know, Sivir, just, she's she's the one as far as eight carries are looking right now. Yeah, and with that being said, no few new sports pick up the Sejuani that was previously hovered by TFT. And Zaya locked in as well. Zaya, she has been known as probably one of the better ADCs in the meta when it comes to competitiveness. And Zaya does decently well into Sivir in the early game because she does have some great damage with her blade collar. And if Sivir isn't on point with her ease, she can suffer a lot of damage from that alone. Next, Talia locked in from TFT, and that could go either mid or jungle. I wouldn't be surprised if either. Dude, jungle Talia is exciting. I like the champion. I think she's. I think she came out as a really interesting pick as sort of that mage jungle. That she comes out almost like an assassin the way she throws out her damage. Super quick, just the, the threat of her level 2 gank, the point and click type toss. Uh, it's really an interesting champion. And uh, But I think that she's mostly been relegated to mid lane. I think they made some major change to her that uh, really gutted her jungle in the past. I don't exactly remember, but I haven't seen it as much. So Yeah, I think that was the reduction of the Q damage. Definitely hindered her clear a lot. That we have the Khan and Lux band coming out from TFT. Definitely pinching the support pool left over gonna take off some picks that work incredibly well with Zaya with Rakan, Zaya Duo of course, and Lux has strong support in her own right and synchronizes pretty well with Zaya. And then No Fury Sports taking off the Lissandra and the Yumi off the board because Yumi Sivir can just perma shove and poke for days and Lissandra is just Lissandra. Get that nice QSS tax just like a Malzahar. Definitely yeah, don't want to have to deal with it. Yumi Sivir is a very not exciting lane to play against and it also has the advantage of scaling incredibly well. You know, Sivir getting the bonus AD from Yumi passive and sending that through her uh, through ricochets, absolutely cleaving through teams, doing a tremendous amount of damage from the pair without even having to offer much to her besides the passive. So getting that off the board is very important if you're going to give them the Sivir, so they're going to go off the Morgana instead. Yeah, Morgana, the double spell shield bot lane playing as passive as all can be. Definitely want to go for that shoving. Definitely want to opt for that like safety when it comes to CC. And then they're saying, all right, we're going to put that to the test. We're going to pick up the Braum, picking it into Morgana. It's definitely going to be a lot harder to proc that Braum passive off. But just the potential of just an all-in is definitely there because Zaya works incredibly well off of Braum slows and she can stack that passive off relatively quickly if she can get either a root off or if she just has W active. 
Yeah, the nice thing about... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, last pick, Vlad. You can continue. Vlad will always do what you want Vlad to do. I was saying, the nice thing about picking Braum into Morgana is, you know, past the laning phase, having access to, uh, you know, getting the slow off of both his Q, or having the option to stun off both his Q and his auto attacks, you can set yourself up on different targets so that Morgana can't exactly lock down one with Black Shield. And the AoE uh, aspect of his, his ultimate can cross the line of multiple of these teammates. So it makes it a lot harder for Morgana to target pick who she wants to put the Black Shield on. And that is going to be a jungle, Talia. Yeah, Juggle Talia. I'm excited for it. Just getting that insane amount of damage coming out from Talia early if she gets any sort of a lead. And Nico more than likely going to be played in the mid lane, I'm assuming, because you never know. I've seen a few Renekton mids, like I think in Korea or something. But it I've is. seen Renekton mids, but it's few and far between. So I'd, I'd be safe to assume it's Nico mid. Still kind of iffy about whether they want to put Vlad or Aatrox up top lane. I'm guessing they want to put Aatrox because I don't know. I think I think Renekton wouldn't do that bad, bad into Vlad, just personally. Yeah, it, it seems a pretty iffy lane, you know. Vlad sustains a little bit off of Renekton uh, existing him, and if Renekton doesn't find the E angle to get in on him and kind of gets poked away, then he has to people in to and from in a team fight with like that whole Sivir movement that we have and as you stated with that Talia like seismic shove and Nico ultimate can definitely turn a team fight around if she can bait people into it. Yes, I'm really looking forward to that fight and uh, for those of you who may have not caught the the discussion we were having, you know, talking about uh, Team Fish Taco looking to get a little bit of what they had last game going. Azuki getting a, a getting ahead on this Renekton, more importantly Prowl looking to make some proactive moves on this Talia jungle. Um, you know, the advantage that he had on Kindred before, the very linear CC path of Kindred, you know, I run up to the guy, throw a slow on them and try to run them down. Talia is able to trap people now with this Weaver's Wall throwing behind them, looking for the seismic shoves to get the CC down and uh, absolutely throw this team, uh, throw no fear right off their footing to be able to get uh, fights to happen on their terms. Really looking forward to see how Prowl is going to make the moves here. Uh, Prowl had a very good showing early game on a, you know, a scaling champion, you know, Kindred very notorious for scaling up her damage like an AD carry in these fights. So we'll see what they can do on the Talia, who, you know, has a pretty a pretty early-ish damage spike on Talia. You know, you get into the one or two mage items and just flip them for a combo and it pretty much blows anybody up.
Yeah, you just start making plays around the map using your passive to start roaming up and down the river just extremely quickly, faster than most junglers could even move. And with that being said, I'm just like, now we can confirm Vladimir going into the mid lane against the Nico. He could definitely get some picks off onto Vlad early game. If he can bait out his pool with either a Nico Sun or like a seismic shove, he can definitely get open up to a lot of punishment in the early game. Because I'm pretty sure Nico will be able to just poke him out of lane a good bit. But it's Vlad. So, sustain away, as some would say. All right, you can poke Vlad for as long as you can. If you're not going to go for the all-in, you know, he does have the Crimson Tide on his Q. Uh, turning that over, you know, that does give him a percentage missing health heal. The massive heal over the over the course of his ultimate, as well as um, his W healing. You know, all of his kit just has healing all over it. So, the longer you go fighting Vlad, where you're not locking him down and killing him, the more it's going to end up going in his favor. So really, you're going to want to see 48 going for the snares and the seismic shoves and just kind of popping him off immediately. Uh, that's what they're going to be looking for in these fights. Yeah, and meanwhile in the bot lane, just going to see which lanes are going to get more sho like more shoves in. It's like you see the Sivers, she's already known for just having that WQ, like just bouncing across the wave and just perma shoving into the, into the lane. But the good thing about Zaya is that she's able to kind of match that shoving potential because of her Q and her feather passive. It's just able to wipe out a minion wave just as quickly, if not faster, depending on how far ahead she is. And it's definitely, I think it's really going to be dependent on how the supports play into each other with like the whole Braum passive and Braum Qs working into the Morgana and just how well Campster Dam can play this Morgana out and use the black shields and the spell shields to equal strength, I'd say, in this bot lane. Right now, just in the top lane. Wonder how Aatrox is going to get ahead. I'm just looking forward to it. Just seeing a bunch of resets going like all across the team fight. Like this team looks incredibly squishy. And if Aatrox can kill that Renekton in the middle of a team fight or something, that is just it's just a field day, man. And I'm just I'm just in picturing it right now. See how it goes going into the spectator delay, and we'll be right back. And we are back. We've got game two coming at you. Team Fish Tacos, No Fear Esports. No Fear Esports looking to close this out 2-0. Team Fish Tacos looking to fight back, make this a 1-1. We will see how it goes down. Yeah, it seems like the teams are going in with each other as five. They might potentially stack up a bush or potentially invade. I mean, like they have No Fear Esports, they have the Braum, and they're stacking up this bush. They might yeah, not they, see. Oh, no, this could be a fight. Oh uh, no, they're just gonna they're gonna sniff each other out here. Whoever makes the first move, it's a game of chicken. Oh no. There's the ping. Oh, who's gonna be the first one to move? 
There they go. There's pings everywhere. They're flying for it, looking for it. I think they're going to wait no them out. No sports saying, hey, what's going on, guys? Oh, oh, oh they're looking! Here comes the fight! The Q comes through the such one! He's looking at the knockup! The Aatrox Q finds four! The kill is going to go over. We're going to see Azuki's going to go down. They're looking for more. Piero is going to turn around and face the next. Actually, FK is going to go down to Prowl. He's going to find the Q. Camsterdam locked up next. Frog flies up. Passes flashing coming through. Auto Hex gonna find Camsterdam there. Ari tens next. He dies to a boomerang blade. Double kill coming in for Piero. They're turning around. There's more happening. 48 next up. Ignite's coming down on Prowl. He might be dead. Triple kills in for Piero. And the kill's coming down. And we're gonna see Prowl go down next. Warhog. What is happening? Wait, we're not done. Piero getting the fleet. Here it comes. No, he's got the tempo active. He's just gotta throw a Q. He has the mana for it. Throw it. Do it. Do it. Oh! I think he was too afraid of walking into the bush by himself. That was nearly a triple, man. That was nearly a quad, I mean. Diamond well, Master, out... by the way. That's all I have to say. Turned out three for three. Even for both teams, but where that gold went is definitely different. Piero sitting on three kills early, but not able to spend it. Yeah, he put a fat thousand gold in his pocket there, and uh, I don't. <laughs> Who? This is just fighting. That everyone's so low that it didn't die, and that that everyone's just fighting in, in these lanes trying to push each other away. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Vlad he like went back in to lane, and now he's already poking out Nico here with just all of his sustain. And you have to think about it, this just became a jungler's paradise. Every summoner spell, you look at those, every summoner spell across the board, except the Zuki's flash, uh, Retend's flash, and two teleports are gone. This is, anybody yeah. could get ganked right now. It's that time of the month for junglers just to start roaming around. Dude, Especially I would on the Talia. This, this is just camp gank, camp gank, camp gank, just do it. Both mid lanes getting Warhog extreme. getting put down. 48 gonna find it, looking for the movement speed from the W, trying to get something off. Not gonna happen. Oh, but camps there him with the roam though. You see him up there, he's right behind him. This could be a really easy find. Azuki getting locked up in the box. Oh, Warhog turns in for the Q, he finds it! He gets the auto attack, camps at him, it's gonna find the kill. And the flash from Azuki, the last man flashing, turns around and gets the kill on the actually AFK. Griller level two right now, Azuki might be looking for him. No, he's gonna walk it back away. Oh, wait, the pings are coming down, he spots him. Oh, Prowl! Prowl on to Griller right now, both level two, he goes for the E. Not gonna find it, actually AFK gonna teleport back and try and find some damage down on Azuki. Azuki gonna slide in, gets hit by the Aatrox Q. Oh, it seems like he's trying to match. Oh, Azuki locked up in the box! Can't get gets pulled back in! Right into Griller's W and it's enough damage for them to take him down. Azuki falling. A little bit aggressive there. Not too wise of a decision, I'd say. If he was able to meet up with Prowl like fast enough, then that would have been fine. But he ate that W right to the face and that just shut everything down. <laughs> Meanwhile, Piero backed extremely early and right now, just the fight is sitting on just a single longsword and Piero is sitting on a BF at like four and a half minutes. Yeah, if I had the chance to go be a level three server with a BF sword, I'd probably do it. So I don't blame the guy. Me neither. I mean, that shoving, that wave is going to just get melted like butter with each Q. Like a single... So it's just by its health. That's like one Q, half your HP, gone. Throwing a couple more autos, gone. <laughs> Reminded that Sivir is a mage pretending to be an AD carry every time she throws Q. Just let it be known. Look at that damage. So you can turn around, getting a nice chunk on to actually okay. Yeah, same thing as before. Renekton in this matchup, he has the ability to go in whenever he wants and just has to play around those sweet spots that actually AFK uses on the Aatrox right there. If he go uses them to waste, then he's got really nothing else to fight him back with. I remember back in my day, I used to watch a man named Cinco Gazer. He played Renekton and made it look like nobody else got to play the top lane. Plus, that man has Renekton. But what we're looking for here, R10 kind of find a nice Q on the Piaro. Bit of damage coming through. AFK is just constantly getting shoved in. Azuki has level 6 here. Stun coming through. He's My little kill gets him with the empowered Q. He's done. My man just got cut up like a loaf of bread. That was yikes. Is on the back of a ward here. 
Trading Q for Q up on the bot lane. Definitely not what you want to do with Zaya. Q does a decent bit of damage, but nothing compared to a uh, 310? Target. Sitting on Nipiro, gets an auto attack down. Grillers in the back, he's gonna get rooted up. Just some sneaky Braum play. Not able to get the passive off. A bit too far away, but decent ship damage nonetheless. And right now, just look. No, I'm not. The camera's not even hovering over, but I'm just looking at the top lane. He's just what jumping up off. Happening? He's just what holding him down outside Leave of this the man tower. alone. Look at the damage. Slides back. Just sitting there proxying the wave, telling him, "Yeah, you're not getting anything off of this." This is my lane. He's asserted the dominance. He's up 20 farm, and he's got two kills and an assist over the man. Yeah, I would say it's we've we're seeing Azuki, you know, playing the same way he was game one, but at. In contrast, Prowl, we've not seen anything from him since that craziness in the jungle. Oh, we see the Q. It's going to get eaten by the Spell Shield on Retem, but they're turning on Gamsterdam now. Two procs, four procs, flashes in. Spell Shield himself to dodge out the stun, but it's not enough. They get the Z20 follow up stun, and that's going to be the kill going over Just Mari Tem's trying to walk up to Piero, gets a second proc on him, but he has to turn around before he gets too much damage. Oh, the flash Q! Oh, he had to get out of there. Just be took a lot of damage there, but it got eaten up mostly by the Braum. Definitely wanted to go for something. He, there was a lineup, and he could have potentially gotten both of them, but just not there in time. Timing a little bit off, but definitely wants to get something out of this bot lane, being extremely low as it is. But he's got no mana. Now he does. Now he does. Three ten, toss him a mana potion, being a nice guy. Giving him a chance, man. He's already got a VF sword. Give him a bit more. 7-4. Waves is getting elted. You know, say kind of interesting, you know, typically I, I feel like we see the Sivir, you know, hot for the Essence Reaver as well. You know, kind of see it in her build, you know, it goes for the early mana sustain and just kind of AFK throw up a wave, but you know, she had the money and said, you know what, damage seems really nice, why not pick up the BF Sword? Yeah, I mean, the spike from a BF Sword versus a Caulfield's Warhammer is pretty strong, so if you're just wanting to get some of that early game dominance like ahead, definitely go for that BF sword, and that's exactly what he did. Now they have an infernal trade pretty much in their pocket, considering Grillers over in the top side of the map. So right now, even more damage going onto this Saber, this Renekton, and this Talia. And if you are TFT, this is exactly what you want. Piero getting an unsuccessful spell shield there did not absorb the, the dragon attack. Came a little bit delayed, but uh. Not too picture perfect, but they are going to take the Inferno they look for. Next dragon is another Inferno. Indeed. More and more damage coming out. And Piero matches up this pickaxe and picks up a pole as well, just amplifying his damage more and more. And being a responsible ADC, picks up a couple control wards while he's at it. Gotta love it when your ADC boss control wards as a support player, dude. Truth, I, as a support player, my AD carry picks up a controller, it's a little fist bump for me. Do your part. Open up the... It's like, even AD carries can ward. It's like, somebody needs to... Someone needs to make, like, a poster of that, like... It's like the whole, like, we can do it poster, but it's just, like, ADCs can ward. But we can do it, you can help. <laughs> yeah. We want you to ward. To ward? Somebody make that a poster. But it's, it's Uncle Rise. It's Uncle we Rise want you to ward. We want you to ward. <laughs> Love it. The control ward being set in the bush by re here. You're gonna knock out that ward so they can't get vision in the bush. Maybe setting up something for Gorilla later. And while the W just dealing out an insane amount of damage, cutting down just V's HP down to half. That'd be nice. Connect up in the top lane, but it's looking pretty solid for TFT as we said previously. Goldly doesn't show too much, but the item difference is there. Yeah, I would say a lot of it's resting on the back of just be having the 202 on the side, you know, having a pretty considerable lead himself, you know, isn't terribly far behind on the server, you know, only sitting actually, they're sitting about even at gold guys. It just looked a lot worse than 3 0, but you know, just did a nice job in the last game of staying, you know. Top and mid difference was a little bit there, but Justy stayed. I believe Justy was actually ahead in CS the whole game over Piero, even while they were building up uh, their lead. So he's definitely doing a good job of keeping himself ahead of and not being too playing too scared in this 3-0 Sivir. 
Yeah, definitely have to take it on the chin. And that's how you gotta win some of these games as an ADC. Even if your team isn't doing performing as well, as long as you just stay alive as much as possible and start scaling up as much as possible, it's gonna eventually gonna pay off. You gotta be ready to hit him with the better bot wins, no matter what. No matter what. Just a little bit, Bonnie gonna miss there. Another spell shield. Oh, they got finally got the catch on a Warhog. Going for the ultimate turn, trying to get the kill on the Prowl. Looking for the W of the Ignite ultimate down. Prowl is dead. That's going to be the Flash E. Actually, Prowl is not dead. What in the world? How did Prowl survive that? He's going to get out of there after the ult pops, after the Ignite goes down. Actually, FK tries to go for the fall. They do turn the kill on the Warhog, and they're going to take the one for a... Oh, he turns it around. Actually, FK finds the Flash Q. Takes the auto attack before the pop blossom can happen, and that kill is going to go. Before, actually, AFK. Yeah, and Azuki, meanwhile, in the bot lane, tried to TP down there, and it seems as though he's got that early BF sword and Kindle to him. Seems like he might be wanting to go for that early Chojin, trying to get some of that extra CDR going when he wants to all in. Not surprised by that at all. And in the meantime, in the mid lane, off of that, Death 48 picks up his GLP. He's going to start putting that Glacial to work. I thought for a second that was going to be a Brom cube bait for the spell shield, and I thought I was going to immediately follow up with the with the ultimate, but not going to go with that. Griller realizing he's going to get spotted up by a ward here. Yeah, there's only so much you can do. It's like double spell shield ball in, and they're warding up the place. You gotta start just baiting out these spell shields somehow. In the meantime, it's pretty much just a farm lane. Ooh, that's Glacial Ogman, Nico. He's gonna get the slowdown. Vlad is gonna have to deal with a little bit even more harass as he finishes the GLP. Camp so didn't finally find the snare. Oh, there's the Nico snare. Look at the damage coming down to Warhog. Warhog actually protobelts in. Gets the phase rush proc, but he takes a good amount of damage in the process, getting the nice trade on 48. Oh, Griller going over there, finding Izuki, catching him on it. Rather, Izuki trying to flash out of the Aatrox box, manages that. Warhog's there, Prowl is trapped right now, but there's a Nico! GLP and Snare is gonna get him out of there. It's a pretty solid GLP and Snare coming out from 48. Definitely saved Prowl there, he had no mana. Oh, but... Oh, Izuki, he's gonna eat some fruit. Doesn't oh, 48's on the side, Warhog has the walk. Definitely a close call there. Could have gone pretty badly for TFT had it not been for 48 there. Yeah, the absolute, you know, the, oh, there's the GLP, the snare, the Q. Warhog has to go for it. <laughs> oh, 48's looking. No, that's just the clone. 48, Warhog getting a nice heal back up. Oh, finds a man. snare. Might try to make something happen. Auto, auto, auto Q Ooh. finds the kill. 48. Showing that mid lane dominant. Yeah, War again falling a bit behind in the mid lane. Could be because of the early game trades, but at the same time, it's like you're glad to getting hit by a few too many bindings, but 48 taking advantage of all that, getting as much damage as he possibly can in this matchup. Oh, Piero! There's the auto, auto, auto! Silver Ultimate tries to come out, has end up flashing there. The flash comes from Justify! He's gonna find the kill just by getting the shutdown on that 3 0 Silver Griller in the back, trying to find Cancer Damn. Locked up by the Morgana, it flashes at the right time. 310 tries to find Prowl, slows him over the Brom Q. They're Man, gonna I was walk just it out waiting there. For, I was waiting for Zyder to turn around. That could have been such a good fight for her, I think. But same time, that's another good kill picked up for Just V right there. Getting that kill on Piero and getting that shutdown gold. Oh, there's the seismic shove. A lot of damage coming through on re 10. And the Herald is going to go over to the side of Team Fish Tacos in the meantime. Yeah, pretty early. Rift Herald, not really enough to take advantage of the plating. But for where they're at right now, just getting a tower and opening up the map is definitely going to benefit them in more ways than one. This is though, Grill is going for that Infernal Drake, and they might be having a contest them for it. Yeah, I would say this is definitely a good spot for we're seeing actually AFK get a TP into the violin. They're gonna quickly eat up that dragon. There's now an inferno on both sides. Get it up quite a bit. Next dragon coming up is Cloud Drake. In about five minutes. In the meantime, Piero finished up his Berserker's Reads and does sit on an IE with most of his call completed at this point. And Zaya built up to that S3 already, getting some extra zeal and crit off of that. It's definitely going to help her out when trying to trade with Piero in the long run. Azuki is going to snap that solo gold with 
Ladings are down, but he's going to get enough of that solo gold off the Rift Herald drop. Puts a bunch of money on his pockets now. Has the Shoujin TMF. He is a pretty strong croc here. At the same time, Snare's going to come down onto Re 10. Or is narrowly going to get saved. Griller finding the ultimate onto Azuki. Azuki going to get caught up there. Seismic Shove is going to miss onto Griller. Azuki's trying to get it. Azuki slides back in. Look at the damage coming through. What in the world is that? Warhog, it has nowhere to go. Tries to get some drinks on Blue Buff. Can't even flash the time. Triple kill. Azuki is a monster. There's the Shoujin Reactive for it. He just goes in and just... If everybody's clumped on top of him, there's not much you can do to hide from that Q. That just goes to show how... How much of a snowball can happen when you give that er that many early kills over to a Reactive. Doesn't even need the life steal. He's just a steal. Oh, Silver Ultimate is gonna get pop pen. Ultimately, Kemp's there trying to run around looking for something to hit. Drops the black shield. They are gonna burn the Silver for basically nothing. Yeah, that's one downside for Silver in this lane is that she has to play defensively because Zaya is no joke when it comes to like unloading damage onto people. Opt in for some damage onto the tower, but they're gonna back off just quickly, clearing out some vision. And that is not a good spot for them to be oh, in. Oh, wow! Finding the wall coming through. There's the Brom ultimate. Campsdown's locked up, but 48 is gonna find the Nico ultimate over the back of that. That is definitely not where they wanted to be. Prowl finding a beautiful Weaver's wall set up there. Yeah, without the just be having that flash, he got just pincered in there and didn't. Wasn't expecting the Weaver's wall to come out that soon and just too far away to just walk back down into lane and just get around from that. That Nico ulti was pretty solid. Just pretty much collapsed onto both of them. Nowhere for them to go. Yeah, we're seeing it again. Team Fish Talks is making a strong case to try to fight back to get this game three. And if they're looking as dominant as they are, the snare's coming through. 48's looking for a Look at the duration of that Nico snare. There's the slow from the GLP. 48's just chasing him down at this point. Oh, he burns the ultimate. Has the ignite. Warhog trying to make something happen. He's going to end up walking away there. Gonna get enough from the heal back so he's not dead. But yeah, it's all that AP on to 48. Oh, right Zuki, where are you right now? Drops the ultimate, slides out of the Aatrox box. Look at the damage coming down to Griller. Sliced up, diced up. Can he get the kill on this man? Stunned up. There's no tower for you to run to. He's gonna turn into actually FK now. Azuki's just a terror at this point. He's gonna flash over the wall. Looks for Griller, kills him with the Q. AFK, you're gonna be next. Flash the way. Can you get away from the croc? He's got minions to eat through. He's not gonna go. Oh, there's Prowl. Finds the W, looking for more. Ari 10 is sit there. Slowed up, gonna get the kill and finds it. Double kill coming in for Prowl. And this is Team Fish Tacos just saying, hey, that game one never happened. Let's show you what. Fish Taco comp really looks like. Yeah, they definitely put in that work with this Renekton, and that Nico pick has definitely paid dividends for them against Warhog here. They're neutralizing their two biggest factors when it comes to these late game team fights of just being able to dive into their back line. And they said, all right, we don't have that many tanks to like sustain with it. And as we said, the only way to counteract that is by just punishing them in the early game. They're certainly doing that. And here we thought after that level one that the 3 0 Silver was going to end up being the monster threat here, but. Uh... Pierre's kind of playing in back row. He's just kind of not dying at this point, and really, it's Suzuki and Prowl putting on a show again. And, you know, 48 is definitely showing, hey, you had a really good showing on Aurelian Soul last game war, but uh, let me show you what my pick can do. Yeah, I'm just really, really, like, in interested in how well this Nico's doing. Like, he's got the GLP finish, he's got the Twin Shadows, just how annoying Glacial Augment can be on certain champions is ridiculous. Like, it, with it's Ari so... And Nico. It's so frustrating for champions like Nico and Ari, who both, you know, the Glacial itself, you know, the items itself, what they offer, the, the slow is very irritating. But for champions that have access to movement speed buffs, you know, the speed on Nico's W active, as well as, you know, hard CC. So you, it makes it almost impossible to dodge in the first place for the setup, and then you just follow it up with that. It's, it's such a free all over her. Yeah, and it's just like, you would think that's like, okay, you're building GLP, you're building Twin Shadows, which was like originally like made to be sort of like a support item in a sense. Right now, you're pretty much like, okay, even if they're taking this sort of like utility summoner, like utility rune option, it's still dealing an insane amount of damage. Like any sort of a lead, and they're pretty much like in kill range. Ooh, and finding the other as well. 
Yeah, Dusty's trying to do what he can, sitting on the Essence Reaver Rapid Fire Cannon, trying to get something to happen. Warhawk has to walk away in fear of an Eco Snare. Oh, Redek Brom looks for the ultimate, it doesn't quite land Azuki. Azuki's gonna turn this around, this is scary. Weaver's wall is turning around, they're gonna enter this fight, they get popped back in! They're on top of Azuki now, he's stunned up, ignited up! Can they even stop him? Look at this damage come through, he's still gonna find a kill! 48's gonna turn around on Brom, there's an Eco ultimate, the lockup's gonna come down to Warhog. Warhog has nowhere to go, Brom from the Vladimir W, trying to find something, tries to get a drink, Make something happen with an E, not gonna make it happen. 48's gonna turn around, gonna bait him through. He's actually gonna survive as well. No, the flash gonna come through from Just Feet. Turns around and gets the shutdown onto 48. This is a long fight. Actually, it's gonna go down to Prowl in the very end. But Just Feet's looking for Pyrrha. Pyrrha, no mana. Turns it around, Feather Storm comes through, gets the kill. Turns around, Camps and Am's next. He goes for the stopwatch, nothing to do. Double kill comes in. Just Feet is a monster. Can Prowl reach him? He's got gonna... Oh, he hits him with a straight Q. He's down. Double kill's coming through. Griller slides in. Don't know if he has it. No. Another Q comes out. Prowl finds the triple kill. Pretty awkward fighting the minions from the top side. The super minions are crashing into their base, and it's just all but Braum left to defend that. It was a pretty. That fight was pretty all over the place. It's like you had, like. Atsuki getting caught out up in the top side of the map, but he's still able to nearly take a kill with him as he was ulting just because of how much sustain he had in his kit. And then Sifra just pumping out some damage here and there, making sure that she didn't die to the flat as, like, didn't die early. It was pretty, it's pretty all over the place. I was not expecting, Pier like, um, Prowl to come out with three kills by the end of that. Like, that just goes to show how much, like, Talia can move around the map, no matter where she is, right. as long as she's got a wall. The mobility around walls with their passive is absolutely so useful in these fights. So once again, it's TFT, you know, being able to pick fights wherever you want. Azuki got caught by three people and Proud just ran up to him and said, hey, we can turn this into a full fight, why not? And it, that fight lasted so long, we had people respawning over the course of that fight. And the blue got stolen. That pay hands. See ya. Well, they're definitely in position to start up this Baron if need be. You have Azuki up in the bot lane. He does have TP available, and he does have ulti available, so you can turn a fight if he wants to if they don't send the right people to deal with him. And they pretty much have to send a 20, I think. Either that or Braum, but if you send either of those, then you lack that CC to contest this Baron. Silver Ultimate's gonna come through. They're gonna look for something here. Pierre's gonna lock that. The Reaver's Wall is gonna cut him from the back. Looking for the flank. Justify is gonna find the kill on Piero though. He does damage. 48's in the center thing. Gets a Nico ultimate down. They're gonna find one kill. At the same time, we're gonna see Prowl on the side trying to fight Warhog. He's gonna flash away from the light. He flashes in, tries to get the drink down, he ignites up. Prowl has nowhere to go. He's dead. But at the same time, Azuki's gonna shove this down in the bottom. The rest of his team is dead, but he's gonna find an inhibitor for his troubles. Yeah, at least they got the inhibitor at that point, because that fight was pretty disastrous for them, how it turned out. I think they pulled the trigger a bit too fast when it came to turning and just running into their side of the jungle in in a line, just lined up a lot of them for for like that Zaya damage. And yeah, if you're in a team fight and you're Sivir, you want to get those, you got want to get into that team fight and start to get your W bouncing off. But you don't want to line up right in front of the Zion. Like, we saw that. Piro knows that he pulled off that, uh, like, ultimate blade caller, like, back in the last game, where he just had the Rillian Soul line up and just turn a team fight around just because of that. And that's exactly what happened this in this team fight right here. Just Sivir got insta deleted, and they had little to no damage to go around the rest of that team fight. Yeah, I think they, they really had a solid setup with Prowl going to... Prowl throwing the Weaver's Wall all the way behind and going for that behind flank, but by the time he was able to turn around and show up for his team, two of his teammates were dead. And then he had to deal with Warhog, you know, catching him on the end there. And uh, Warhog showing he's still got the 1v1 capability. Vladimir is, in fact, still Vladimir. Very, very true. Only enough, Piro going for a static shiv in PD, and I don't know specifically why. Maybe he wants to be more defensive and still do a bit of like burst damage at the same time like he hasn't picked up essence reaver and i would think that essence reaver yeah it's not ie you're not getting that bonus damage out of the way but it's definitely beneficial just having that ultimate up that much more often and that spell shield up just as often you Ooh, really... just be narrowly dodging that nico snare that could have been the end of his life yeah it's just like having that utility up on a much like shorter cooldown it's definitely gonna help out just being safer and making plays around the map a lot easier and if you don't pick up say like a rapid fire you just can situations like that can happen a lot easier where it just have to be like right up in somebody's face to deal any sort of damage to them 
TFT is going to take that Baron, and we are going to see NFE is going to take the very equally strong Ocean Drake, as we <laughs> see Infernal Direct is coming up next. I mean, hey man, if you want Saul out of push, might as well get, a, get a freaking Ocean Drake out here. You got a Vlad, I mean, he can sustain. You got an Aatrox who's got some lifesteal. You got Sejuani who's got a warm up. Man, everybody can sustain out here, man. You know what you cannot sustain right now is going to be your front tower, so that is going to go down. Inhib's going to be exposed here all around the map for the side of NFE. They're looking for something here. Izuki is just hanging around the front here, being a nuisance. Yeah, they're having to put in... Have to just, just keep at, like, dodging all these, like, potential death skill shots. I would say with, like, the more binding, like, the seismic shove from Talia, the Nico root, these... Anybody gets hit by any of these, it could turn into an extremely messy fight for someone. Ooh, the Sivir ultimate off of the brawl. Look at the seismic shove. Reten almost dying off the back of that. Azuki trying to find Warlong. Azuki flashes in the back. Look at everyone going down. Just me disappears. The fight is gone. And if he has nothing left, Azuki just sliding into the back of this fight. That's going to be the inhibitor down, and I think that's going to be the game. Yeah, it's fine. Still that ulti. Warhawk's trying to make something happen. He's looking for someone. The Warhawk has to get out of there. Flashes for him. He's down next. Piero taking that kill. TP coming in for the Renekton. TP coming in. Let's get right back, back into the fight. And that's going to be it. TFT is going to draw this out to a game three. Team Fish Tacos coming in strong. Yeah, definitely a turnaround for the last game. We said, all right, if they're going to play around the same style that they did in the first game, they got to finish out a lot faster and get that lead rolling a lot quicker. And that's exactly what they did. Minus a few small missteps here and there, they were able to get that lead and pretty much t convert that into a win as they needed to. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm excited. I, I mean, the, the, the come from behind, you know, strategy that No Fear was able to pull out in, in game one worked for them. And TFT, or Fish Talker showed us what it looks like when they get to get that dominance rolling and just keep it going without giving them a chance to fight back. That is exactly what they were looking to do game one. Uh, it didn't work out as well, and this is exactly what they pushed for game two. Just the absolute power of the Suzuki Prowl combo is really just running rampant over No Fear. And I swear, if we don't see a Renekton man going into game three, I think someone is going to have issues. Somebody is going to have a talking to up in that draft. That's neither here nor there. That being said, we'll go to a short break in preparation for the third and final game in this best of three, as the score is one to one between No Fear Esports and Team Fish Taco.
and welcome back everybody risen esports we've got game three for you team fish tacos no fear esports this is it this is for the marbles this is the first game of the series or of the season second if you already count the one that's already happened but it's going on i'm skyson here with swift take us through this draft buddy this time i'm not muted i hope and for coming in with ivern and aurelian soul band on the side of tft and Talia and Aatrox band on top of her neck in coming out from the side of No Fear Esports and that makes a lot of sense. Aatrox high priority pick and Renekton we've seen that it has been played and it has been used extremely well the past two games. Speaking of priority they pick up the Karma first pick for TFT and Sivir picked up for No Fear Esports for ADC. Yeah, the Renekton coming down does reopen the Karma. You know, you had the Karma locked out game two, so they are going to reopen it for game three. Uh, taking that, the Rek'Sai is an interesting answer. You know, handing them over the Sivir is what they obviously want there. Sivir is a priority pick. Rek'Sai is going to go for... It's a pretty solid pick all around. Wouldn't be surprised, like, see how well the Sivir does. Ooh, especially in the Caitlyn, potentially. Caitlyn Karma not, wouldn't be a bad lane by any means. I don't... Yeah, being able to keep Karma safe, is, or being able to keep Caitlyn safe, is definitely a big, you know, no one would ever object to giving Hecker more movement speed. Yeah, just, just throw in a Karma, throw in, just throw Karma on top of Hecker, RE him. It'll all be fine. No, imagine if they had Sivert. Now, that'd be something. But, hey. I'm not going to give up too much in the draft. We're not going to meme out here. We are going to hand over the Lux, though. Lux does... Hey, you can switch to Lux Karma and have just as equal results here. Lux going to give it the safety. The extra safety to Sivert are going to set up for some pretty easy Rek'Sai ganks on... Very true, Rek'Sai, with that unusual path thing that teams have to kind of accommodate to and get used to. And if Lux ever lands a bind, that could surely spell death for either this Caitlyn or this Karma. Going into the bands for the last phase of the draft, we have Lissandra taken up as a band for No Fear Esports, which was played out in a couple in the first game, which what? was used pretty well. And I'm guessing they did not ban in time. I'm gonna check with the stats real quick. That is gonna be a Vladimir ban. Vladimir is off the table. Off the table. Didn't have as much of an impact as it possibly could have had in the previous game, thanks to 48's Nico play out in the previous game. But obviously, just because it didn't go well one game doesn't mean it can't go well in the next game. They definitely want to take that possibility off of the table. And Aurelia, the last ban coming out from No Fear Esports. As we saw, it can definitely have some team fighting potential on her own, just even if she gets behind that ultimate, that extra base damage on it, just getting passive resets can definitely turn a team fight around. Ooh, and then Camille knocked off. I guess they didn't want too many strong top laners left up in the champ pool. They didn't want to have someone who can easily synergize with Rek'Sai, especially when you can lock someone down with, say, Camille ulti and then just guarantee it a Rek'Sai ultimate coming through. Definitely not where you want to be. Yeah, I would say, going for a little bit of a new approach with the Rek'Sai Oriana, going for that, uh, you know, instant burst combo to set up here, you know, not trying to look for just a catch that they dogpile onto a fight on. You say, hey, we can have Renekton Oriana set up on top of this and uh, make some things up. They're going to answer with the probably the Morgana. Morgana could definitely be played in either mid or support which also brings in the question where do they want to put this karma because it is caitlin morgana that could either be caitlin karma or caitlin morgana sure. so they lock in a ribbon personally i prefer caitlin morgana because one vine dead that is if yeah caitlin i was gonna say the morgana bind into the caitlin trap into the you don't get to have any fun at all and then even if you somehow survive that you get net slowed and you're just dead it's actually disgusting but the very important thing here is our man azuki finally going to get riven free from the from the binds of the band phase with his riven club tech he is very excited to play that i guarantee you and now into an ergot 
definitely, as from the experience that I've had playing as Riven, I'd much rather prefer playing Riven in an Urgot than Riven in a Poppy, because Poppy is just everything that is wrong with a tank in League of Legends. You can quote me on that, but hey. Urgot picked in as a counter into Riven. Definitely has the potential to do well in this matchup just because of how much base damage he has on his shotgun knee passive now. And with him sort of opting more for that bruiser build with like the whole black cleaver death dance option, he can definitely sustain a lot of the damage that Riven is going to be pumping out if he doesn't fall too far behind. Yeah, so taking that off the board, you're going to see, you know, a lot more fighting. And <laughs> Azuki now getting the Renekton to take it away and saying, you know what, I get to play my champion. So we're going to get to see if actually if K can try to bring a fight here not having i think we've seen him now he's played Aurelia, he's playing aatrox and now he's gonna play the ergot gonna try to bring those you know fighter uh bruisery type top players to try to give him some answer here and we're gonna see if no fear can stop this from once again becoming the azuki prowl show true true it has certainly been that show for the side of tft they've been putting in that work they've been getting those early game leads as they need to with a lot of these comps so now we just have to wait and see how they can work off of this. Now it is Riven Hecarim and not not the easiest of synergies, but there's still potential here. It isn't as obvious as like some of the other synergies we've had, such as like Irelius and Juani, right? So we'll see how they can work off this 2v2 and they don't have the Talia to just start roaming up and down the river with her passive anymore. That is going to be the Karma mid. You were right about that. I think Caitlyn Morgana actually just too strong of a lane to deny. So, we're going to go with that. And just having that binding in the lane, it's just like, all right, if even Lux lands a single binding on either of them, it can at least pick out who to bind, like who to have that spell shield on. And the Aftershock, yeah, it's still going to be there, but it's not going to be as sort of like impactful. Because I think the whole reason why like Aftershock's impactful on Lux is because like if she lands the snare on you, like you probably want maybe want to try to kill her. She's probably close by. But now if like, if that more binding's on, you can just sidestep whatever the heck she's trying to throw at you after the fact and don't even have to worry about her after that. X coming in. Silver Lux. I think they have a potential to just start shoving out the lane, and I think that's probably their best bet. They do have a decent bit of range on their abilities. So as long as Lux doesn't get hit by a stray binding and if just just fought, just fee is able to time his spell binds his spell shields really well then he should be fine in this lane yeah i would say i don't think just he's too worried about it i mean we've seen just he's played immaculate throughout this series you know his guys or uh zaya was the star of game one you know play picked up a you know i'm sorry he was kaisa game one in that win Zaya game two, and you know, even while the rest of his team was kind of falling behind, Just was able to, you know, clean up a lot of those kills that were happening, you know, through the early late game, and uh, maybe just weren't falling into the right hands while his team kind of fell around him. But he's really been the rock of this team, I think, and over the course of this this early mid fight. So seeing him on the Sivir, giving him the luck safety, and you know, a pretty good front line here in Renek in uh, Rexai Urgot is going to be, I think, something that No Fear is going to really have nicely in their favor. Yeah, now I'm, I'm I'm waiting. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm waiting to see how this Karma pick does because man, I tell you, once it gets to like one to two items, Karma like Mantra Q just starts like half healthing ADCs and mid laners, and it's just like, wait a minute. Yeah, Karma <laughs> is definitely a new mage. I I think the thing I'm concerned about here, and the thing I don't like. I mean, again, we're on we're on game three. This is for all the marbles. I look at Team Fish. I look at Team Fish Taco, and where this where's the tank? I worry about True. this team, and I worry that you know if you don't get the the prow the prowzuki engine running up and running, then are you able to stay on equal footing with this Urgot Rexai, who and you know these Sivir ricochets that are gonna just rip through your team? Are you able to you know last in the course of these fights, or are you just all in banking? We're gonna stomp our lane, win, go straight fish taco over everybody, and just end the game at 15 minutes. Is that what they're looking to do? And you have Smite Ignite Hecarim. Prowl isn't going to be able to escape. He gets Rek'Sai knocked up, set up for the Orianna combo. Prowl will die. He only has Ignite and is not bringing a defensive summoner spell here. You know, yeah. I, I feel like this is a very all-in strategy from Team Fish Taco here, and the team comp that No Fear here is way better to go for the long con. 
than the short game that I think Team for Stock is trying to play here. Yeah, so pretty much it's I think we just this is like sort of like the style that I was talking about. It's like, all right, this is the first game of ABL, like the first set of games in the first week. We're like starting to see what these teams are going to be like sort of leaning towards and what styles they like to play. And I think we can say through these three game series that Team Fish Taco like to play these sort of aggro like lanes or aggro picks that's like, all right, we get picks that are strong early game and we get these leads because we know we can get them. And just our only goal is just to snowball them as fast as possible. Just yeah. like taking that early ignite on Hecarim definitely has that kill potential. And especially in, into like someone like Urga or Oriana, they're not going to be able to sustain through an ignite, like in a lane like that, like just Hecarim on his own is nearly enough to kill someone. Ignite on top of that is just going to be too much to deal with. Yeah, that is definitely going to be the uh, the guns out strategy from Team Fish Taco here in Game Three. We're going to see what's going on. We're going to head over to a break. But when we turn it over, we're going into Game Three for all the marbles. First game of the season. We'll see what goes on. And welcome everyone. We are here. Game three, Team Fish Tacos, No Fear Esports, 1-1, everything on the line here. We will see what goes on and uh, make sure to scream it up for your favorite team. Spam that chat. Don't actually spam. You'll probably get banned by the bot. Doesn't matter. Let's see what goes on. You already know what it is. Seems like the teams are going for their respective five points. I think they were had enough of that Fiesta at level one the previous game. Whether or not that's going to be Team Fish Tacos doing... We have no idea because from what it seemed like TFT definitely benefited off of that five man stack, even though it seemed as though it wouldn't have. They like walked into their team and it just didn't go for them. Yeah, that was an absolutely messy fight getting the, and I mean, it looked so beautiful in the beginning because uh, the setup for CC was so, so much in No Fear's favor, but it ended up, you know, Blasting call out here. Oh, 48. Oh. Gonna find the Q. Oh, Griller. He's gotta be careful. Azuki actually is gonna find the Q, but Griller's gonna have to flash that to avoid the knockup. So that's an early flash burn from him. Yeah, they didn't have Warhog staying far enough in the lane, spotting out anyone walking into the bush. Kind of punishing Griller for that, not suspecting where his team was. And same with actually AFK. Like, Riven pretty much pathed up through top lane into that side of the jungle, and Hecarim right there, too. Like, there was just no one in position it seemed like to at least spot any of the rotations that were coming in yeah that's a big blind spot for rek'sai especially you know rek'sai pretty notorious for that level two flash knock up and follow up you know just kind of the instant death gank for somebody so rek'sai not having flash available is a real big deal yeah and they were able to get a war down early spot that rek'sai started at his blue they were able to spot that he got the bot lane leash same for hecarim respectively but at the same time, red side jungle camps do give a great deal of XP. Grim taking advantage of that, going for his Krugs. Getting the most out of him. 
trying to find a little bit of this back and forth and you know filing gonna look pretty similar you know fishing for bindings going on and once they res access the spell shield not gonna be too worried about it uh, mid lane gonna be a little bit of back and forth poke Bazooki trying to you know dodge out some of this Urgot damage for he has full kit available to start getting some damage through yeah it seems as though Camps there, and Lane good better vines are getting getting in them pretty consistently. Just has to deal with the uh, sort of spell bindings. I mean, the spell shields coming out from the Sivir, and that shield just from from Lux alone. Once she starts maxing it, it becomes freaking ridiculous. It's like nearly half the the ADC's HP bars worth of a shield. Coming in, yeah. Seems, uh, another fight. Oh. Solid pickup, you know, damage coming through. The shield's gonna be eating up a little bit of that, but still not the picks you want to find. Pierre gonna find some nice book damage. If Camp Sam can find a snare here, Re has gotta watch out. Snare's gonna miss. Yeah, nearly there. Just always that fear of a binding in this lane with Caitlyn Morgana. It's just, it's like it's always it's almost like even like a mental thing. Just. Not like don't get hit by that binding because you yeah, see every binding that comes at you or any time Morgana walks up to you, it is near death. I was gonna say, you know, being on both sides of the coin, you know, the support player in me wants to say, especially playing Lux into Morgana happening a lot, you you always want to believe you have the advantage when the other guy is going of aggressive with the with, you know the skill shots. You know, while when you're the one that's just able to just dodge out, you want to think you're in the advantage, you know, because the other guy has to aim. If he's not applying pressure, then it's basically a 50-50. You have to guess which way you're shooting. But uh, it's the oh prowl, the snare coming through for tether, gonna knock Warhog back into his tower, but Prowl's gonna take a bit of damage on the return there. A lot of damage on the return. Quite a bit of damage. If that was in Night Oriana, that would have been a dead horse. Quite possibly. I would have used that flash, making sure they didn't get knocked back farther into Karma, and then he would have certainly have been dead, as we saw before. The Karma W flash follow up nearly guaranteeing that route. Seems as though Zuki definitely getting the better of Ooh, actually nice playing nice a lot of these trades. And up on CS as well. He's shoving out these waves. Yeah, Zuki getting nice turns in and out of this damage. Definitely showing he knows exactly what he's doing on this champion. Yeah, now taking too much damage in these trades. Weaving auto attacks and damage in between. Ooh, flipped towers. into the tower though, it takes the tower shot. Nice play from actually AFK there, putting the trade right back in his favor. As we were saying, he immediately gets punished as the minion dies. Ooh, the Q dodge. Yeah, it's a nice auto attack slow from the glacial augment there to try to enhance the setup for the Q, but gonna get dodged out by Warhog there. Meantime, Mizuki came in for the early back to use his TP, got himself a call fields. He's gonna be a bit behind on EXP, but it seems as though the actually AF Hay is gonna back just as well. Calls up the TP. Ooh, snare coming through, late black shield on the Piero. But it's gonna be enough with the trap setup that they don't lose too much on the trade. So for it seems like actually AFK as well got himself a page. Definitely in a better position than Azuki was off of that back. Azuki only able to finish up just his call fields. But this fate is definitely going to put in dividends for Urgot here. Just having that extra HP and damage means a lot in the early game. Nice return snare. They were sneaking up on to retend there, trying to see if he was going to get caught sleeping for a snare, but he is going to walk back there. Time and Mizuki coming in trying to even innovate it as well. Ooh, chromosome finding a nice bit of damage. Auto attack get setting up for the W into the Mantra Q. Gonna send Warhog back there, most likely gonna make him expend that teleport. Yeah, making sure that it is used right now. Seems though he's gonna try to hold the wave as long as he can. And oh, Prowl is here. Azuki's looking to get a fight with actually. Trying to bait actually in. Prowl's gonna come in from behind. Actually going for the flash. Gets towards Griller. Azuki gets in, gets a double knockup. They're looking for a big fight here. Azuki on top of the flyers through the ultimate. They can't get around. Azuki Ooh. takes the first kill, takes the second kill, and that is the power of Riven. You can't go low. Gonna get cleaved through with the Blade of the Exile. And that's gonna be a beautiful play. Look at this damage, Piero. Oh, the Lux Shield's gonna come through. 
Piero is walking up to try to find another auto attack on Justy, but it's going to be the Lux Shield to save him there. He's going to have to force him out, and that was an insanely good combo coming out from Mizuki. He's able to sidestep the the knockup coming in from actually AFK, and he was able to just get his Conqueror procked up and just annihilate them with that Riven execute damage on the Wind Slash. And now he's pretty much in the driver's seat. Oh my seat. lord. Oh, he actually is going to take that tower shot. Actually, FK, now he's not going to walk it in. Oh, he has Riven's cooldown and start headed back up. Yeah, a little too much. It seems like Railer's spotting him out in the jungle. He's getting invaded, getting his camps taken at this point. He knows that his Riven's fed. Karma has just enough damage to start contesting alongside with him now. Both mid laners, their respective lost chapters finished. This might be exactly what TFC is looking for right now. They, they've got the machine, they've got Azuki, you know, starting the lead here. Yeah, they've got it rolling, they've definitely got the pieces going in. You've got Piero, he's got the CS lead on this bot lane. As we said, he is the rock, he is the consistent form of damage that this team needs that they can hold on or at least rely on in the mid game if not all the team fights go. Ooh, exactly Prowl, right. looking for Griller. Griller finds the knockup, they're gonna fight here, goes for the ultimate. Doesn't drop the Ignite, here comes the Rek'Sai ultimate, they're trying to find the return damage. Griller has the flash away. Proud did not have Ignite, but oh no, there's Warhog. Warhog's looking for him, finds the ultimate, doesn't quite find him. Proud's gonna end here. up walking away, they're turning on the Warhog now, they turn on Black Shield, comes through at 48, picks up the kill on the Warhog. At the same time, Azuki goes for the Blade of the Exile, looking for everything here, actually doesn't have the Fear Beyond Death quite yet, finds the ultimate, canceling his own Q for the rest of the combo, turns it for the solo kill, and Team Fish Taco is walking through this right now. Yeah, Azuki out there with the pretty clean combo, like, merging his Q and his ulti wind slash in together, it's just so nice whenever I see a good ribbon, at least like, just like when her combos look fluid, it's just so good to see. Because obviously I can't do it. But hey, it's here, here nor there. I would never dream of being able to do it. I, I feel like it's so clean it should have a name. Like it should just have like some overblown anime like the the, <laughs> the the rushing tornado or something crazy. I don't know. You know, it's it's Riven. She's it, champion looks great. You hate to hate to see it happen, but it, it is what it is. And Izuki is building a lead right now. Yeah, and it just goes to show that Zuki does, like, he's pretty confident on this champ. I mean, he's 3-0 and right now. He's got, t like, 20% CDR. Level 8, I didn't see specifically what rune he took, but if he took Sorcery, he could have 30% CDR relatively soon once he hits level 10. Ooh, binding almost landing. I would say Reten walked up dangerously close there. Narrowly dodging. Actually, you know, maybe the overconfidence would help him dodge the Morgana binding plan for him to walk backwards, but ended up walking forward. Good. Good enough to get them. Yeah, so right now, sitting pretty. They've got the leads on who they want. You got Karma with that extra kill. Hecarim's got a good bit of assist, and he's beating Rek'Sai and CS Ooh, right Ooh, at the same time, in the mid lane, 48 going to get knocked back, and that's going to be the quick pickup. Really going to find that knockup onto 48 as he tries to look for the war there. Turns around, for, it's a quick kill. Ooh, and the server queue starting to deal a good bit of damage now. Prowl's looking for Griller here again. Prowl's gonna look at that E damage. What even is the champion? Holds in, spends the ignite, burns him down. Lux Ultimate is gonna come down the pair on the turnaround. They find this trap. Morgana Ultimate is coming through, but it's not enough. That's gonna be the ricochet to come through. Tower Shot's gonna turn around as the Black Shield's out for the snare, and that's gonna be the kill for Justy in the bot lane. At the same time, Prowl's looking for Warhog. Warhog's gonna walk it away. Expecting if Oriana had ulti in the meantime or think he didn't have enough damage to just straight up kill it running around her tower. Respectable. But in the meantime, just be picking up that kill onto Piero there. Relatively clean trade. As far as that goes, that those Lux bindings just like they get to you. Just that black shield like it's gonna block that Lux damage, but since Lux is going aftershock, you're not really worrying about her as far as damage. And then Sivir's just having that extra AD from that pickaxe and call field is just enough to melt somebody's health bar. Yeah, say the 
you can run the Izuki Prow show as long as you want. The longer you let just be just farm up in this lane. Chromosome's looking for the slow, the combo coming down onto Griller. He can't even leave. The Morgana Binding follow up was enough, and Camstram takes that kill. But now Pyro's in the bot lane. R10 walks up there, gets the exhaust, dives E, looks for the snare, snares on minions. Not gonna happen, just be looking at our tower. Yeah. He turns the kill down on Retag. He's not gonna find the kill. Minions aren't gonna do enough there. We're gonna see Camstadam looking for something, but he's not gonna make it happen. But they are gonna find the kill. Not enough taking a return kill for Viera. Camstadam is walking up here trying to make something happen. Has he's flash has available flash. with no, yeah. ult no ulti though. There's potential here, but yeah. Oh, Karma though on the side. They're on the hunt here. 48 trying to find that GLP. Snare coming up. Otto trying to bait that shield. Goes to the W, the Q, and the. Eric gonna kill it with a tether. 48 finds that. Could not spell, figure out what the spell shield there. Ended up being nothing and then dies. Oh no, 48. Chilling Smite coming up from Griller. Has nowhere to go. 48 gonna shield himself. Gonna run around in circles, dancing around, trying to hand RE10 the kill. Gonna find it off the back of the Void Seeker. Griller is gonna get a kill there on the 48. Really solid trade kill. Punishing the fact that 48 went in a bit too far in. But right now, I think that was a pretty solid trade. Like, I mean, Piero, he oh, turned that. Oh, no, Griller, you can't deal. Look at that. Just look at it come through. Griller has to run. Prowl's going to get the chilling smite for the kill. And that is going to be Griller falling again. Yeah, as I was saying, that was pretty solid on Piero being able to turn that 2v1 around and actually picking up a kill there. Punishing the fact that they overcommitted. And he blew both of Just V's sums. I mean, he got his ultimate heal and flash just trying to tower dab him there. And it had not been for that heal of that early flash, he would have died there as well. That was a pretty solid turn of events for Piero there, being that rock that, he, that his team needs to be. Yeah, let's say, oh, there's going to be the camp to damn flash. Ultimate just has nowhere to go. He's going to disappear. Piero is going to put that kill in his pocket off the back of the Hecarim ultimate. And that's going to be an easy pickup for Team Rishtok. Potential four man here. Minion wave's a bit low, but it seems like they might try to proxy this wave out and drag it out. Zuki here in the mid lane in a deal with Warhog. Seems as though Spot Tower might be going down relatively quickly, trying to transfer the group up over. Slow's gonna miss up, Root is gonna go down, and he buffers the tunnel, but Griller's still gonna take a ton of damage. Here comes Prowl from the side! He's looking, Growl has a flash! There's the Orion ultimate! But there's all your damage, Warhog, you have nothing to follow up. There's the Karma Q, there's the binding! But there's the Lux there on the other end of it, Uzuki's coming down, Uzuki's gonna make this a fight. Azuki's brought a big sword to this fight. 48's on the on the end here. Actually, if Kay's gonna catch him up, Azuki's looking to hop over the wall. Uh, oh, he's the lone soldier. They know he's there. Q's gonna flop. He's gonna flip. He's looking. Goes over the wall. He makes it able to dodge out the blinding. Pretty solid. Didn't have to blow flash to get out of that situation, which is definitely beneficial on Ribbon. You want to have that flash up as often as possible to be able to jump onto an enemy ADC or enemy carry, especially coordinated play. It's gonna be a lot harder to get on top of these people without them making mistakes. Meantime, Riven nearly there up to two items at the 16 minute mark. She can get that death stance, she's gonna become nigh unkillable with, unless you bring somebody like Orianna with her. Yeah, they're really gonna have to commit a lot to just try to bring down Azuki at this point, and Azuki is still just Gonna be on a war path to try to get to either Warhog or Dusty here to take them down. And this is exactly what Team Vistaco is looking to do. Yeah, I mean, you have. Azuki's just up here. He can take as many of the camps in the jungle as he wants. He pretty much forces actually AFK to sit up there in the top lane and just watch him take everything because he can't fight him. And if he gets too far away from his tower, he's pretty much dead. Like, I'm pretty sure he's oh, is that far no. he could There's the blade of the exile. He has the flash he himself out of there. I was saying, I was like, yeah, I think he's in kill range. He's like a li almost a bit over half HP, and I think you're a bit too far away from tower. And as we saw, he had to. Blow that flash. Just be gonna pop the silver ultimate just from Prowl getting near him. Griller's gonna look for him, gonna get stunned up before he can find the knockup. Actually gonna have to turn away there. Camstadam coming from the back. Oh my lord, Prowl, he spell shields and it doesn't matter! He's gonna go down to that, he turns it around, actually gonna take the return kill. So we are gonna see some shutdown gold going into Justy's pocket, but that is Prowl just absolutely running him over. Sometimes these heads have to go for those hacker plays where you run somebody down under tower just to assert dominance. 
I feel it. <laughs> In the meantime, not that many objectives are coming up, at least until Prowl comes up. Uh, uh Reten gonna look for the super strong Moby Boots Lux combo. Has that enough flashing over the wall. And that's gonna be Warhog in the center on the Morgana Center with the Ignite down. Actually gonna get the luxury. That's gonna be enough. It's gonna have the headshot! It's gonna take the kill on the Reten. That's not the trap you want to step on, friend. Somebody had to go over it. And too bad it was Lux. 310 taking out on the chin for his team, but that gives up the mid tower. Finding my Oh, land. the tether is gonna actually land on to just by just showing up to this fight. Already back down to one fifth health again. Kara's got a gun, he is not afraid to use it. He does have ulti, but he's relatively low on mana. Decides to let him get away and just start taking out this next tower. They don't have any wave clear. It's pretty much a beat tower there. And meanwhile, he just got Riven sitting up in the bot lane. He's finished up. Oh, finally. And finds a snare. Oh, the Orion ultimate! Amsterdam's gonna go for the stopwatch. Prowl's on the back there, gonna get exhausted up, has nowhere to go. He's rooted up. No summoner spells to save him. Actually, it's gonna be the double kill. Oh, reward. Now he's gonna set up the speed up there, looking for more. Griffin's on the back with ulti. And here comes the 1v5, the sword hero! Play hero coming through! The ultimate gonna find one, gonna try to get a just v just he flashed away! They actually coordinate and get him out of there. There's the shutdown into Warhawk's pocket. That nearly went horribly for them there. They were able to just narrowly avoid death. They're just like at 200 HP like each. Another auto onto any of them would have spelled death and a reset for that triumph stack for Azuki there. Seems as though Azuki start playing this relatively safe and he's going for that chain vest, more than likely going for the third item GA. He understands that he can't take too many risks and if he does get caught out, he could spell death for his team as he is more than like one of their main sources of damage, at least on a flank. Yeah, I was gonna say once again, you saw the you know the response to the flank is instead of letting their team collapse, just kill off the front of their team, so the the collapse is suddenly by yourself. There's only so much you can do. It's just one of Ribbon's sort of like weaknesses, just not being able to just. You can't, no one can really brute force their way through like a bunch of CC, Riven no less either. Yeah, so ever since the uh, the mo the very notable nerf to her E, they I think ripped three seconds, three or, three or four seconds off of the E cooldown to put it in the Q. It gave her a lot less uh, sustainability in these fights, having less access to her shield. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a good bit of Riven players have been able to sort of counteract that, and if they're able to use early game, it could definitely help them out, but it's definitely gonna come up every once in a while where he's just like, dang, if I just had shield a second up sooner or something like that. Oh, Azuki trying to find actually AFK. He's gonna try to eat himself out of there. He has no flash available. Azuki, he's gonna get the slowdown though. Walk himself out of there. Oh, Prowl! Prowl gonna get snared. Those the E. He's into the black shield now. You know, we have to keep watching for Prowl in these fights. If he gets caught by the CC, he has no flash, no ghost. Nowhere to go besides using the ultimate to get himself in and out of place. Yeah, oh, Azuki. Oh. Is Azuki just buying time here? He's just trying to push back up this wave while the rest of his team is barren. Griller knows. Griller's so. the voice seeker. They have, they have awareness. It seems like they were trying to back off. They don't feel too safe. And there's a control ward inside the wall somehow, but that gets taken out just as quickly. He's coming in, is he still being threatening? Oh, look at that GLP slow, beautiful. That Mantra can put out a chunk of damage. And Silver Ulti, pretty much non existent on top of that Glacial Augment Freeze Ray. Can only get so much out of it. But in the meantime, it seems as though they're gonna go to clear out some vision for your sports. Making up for the vision that they lost, but huge damage coming on to Zer. Yeah, like we said, just the these utility items that are sitting on 48, just the the GLP and the Twin Shadow, still able to put out so much damage with these Mantra Qs. Really able to shove back any of the you know wave clear that no fear is trying to perform. 
you know, like Warhog on Orianna and just be on that Sivir that they have just like so much built in wave clear in their kits. It's definitely beneficial for them to have someone that has like a bunch. This still has a decent bit of AP and wave clear on that Karma, so not too bad of item pickups as we were saying before, like in the previous oh, game. Oh, Zuki. Finding the stun on the actually FK might go for the blade of the exile here. No, he's gonna slide back out. Actually, just getting a little banged up. Yeah, only downside into this matchup is that Riven can't exactly like hundred to zero or got like unless you get him like really caught out and like way too far away from his tower. Yeah, Urgot will always have a place to go. The longer it goes, the tanker he's gonna be able to get, even with the black cleaver shred. He's able to get himself to a pretty good point where he's not too terribly worried. Yeah, just the occasional walk to his tower is just enough for him. It seems as though he's going to be building towards... Oh, Camsterdam! He flashes over that wall. He did not want to deal with the impending Oriano, but that would have been a free cash for them. Yeah, potentially even Baron there not having somebody like a Morgana binding and Morgana ulti with a Zonia's there. It could be super detrimental and doesn't seem like they realize that they're sitting on a Warden Tribush. Oh, Sivir ultimate! They're looking for- Oh, he's gonna find the boy shot onto Piero. There's the Orion oh, the next round! Going for the huge Hecarimble! Piero's gonna turn that around, finds the kill on the Orion. They get the kill that Rizuki's trying to find something on the back there. Ari-10 has nowhere to go, finds the double snare. The Morgana Body's gonna kill him, and there's Azuki. Azuki's already taken down one. I think this is just gonna be cleaning up the spoils here. Actually, he's gonna flash around him for the E, but it's not enough. Finds the knockup and the double kill. And there's gonna be your ace for Team Fish Taco. Yeah, this should be a pretty clean mid tower, and it's just gonna let Azuki tank this up. He's already got shield, he's got death stance, he's gonna be able to tank a good chunk of this damage. And I think they'll probably just walk off with the Sin Hib and go towards the Baron, which is definitely a smart play from them. A lot of their items have been completed. You got Riven, she's got the GA sitting on her, she can definitely work with that. You got Heck Grip, who finished up the Triforce, and they just had all that damage ready for that team fight. And that flank from Azuku was really good, just zoning and sniffer off of the rest of that team fight pretty much made it super difficult for them to win that. Yeah, this is the situation where, again, this is, the, you know, this has lots of shades of game. I don't know, it's a little closely. So that's gonna come through. We are, we are seeing, you know, the shades of game one here. TF. TFT is building up an incredible lead. They have the Baron, they have several kills, they're up four structures, and you know, this is the point where you have to double down on your defenses, you know, except that you have the Sivir Orianna and say, you know what, we can play the long con here on the side of No Fear. You can't, you can't run into things, you can't let Azuki find these flanks. You have to, you know, you have to dial the tone, you have to dial the pace of this game back some, or it, Fish Taco is just gonna clean it up and finish. Yeah, because that fight started out with like Silver Ulti and Rek'Sai trying to go in onto onto Piero there, forcing out his flash, and then he was just way too far caught out. And then with Hecarim landing that like two to three man Ulti, just zoning off that Oriana, making her Ulti non-existent, it was just nothing left for them to handle. And then Urgot not even there in the fight, and Silver pretty much zoned out as we said before. There's pretty much no damage in that team fight to deal with anyone else on their team. Yeah, it's just the availability of this Riven Hecarim, you know, surprise flank just means you absolutely have to either have vision to chase these fights or you have to abandon when things, you know, get out of hand. You can't, you can't be chasing anybody at this point. You will add, you will walk into a Caitlyn trap, you will walk into a three-man Hecarim multi, or you will walk into a Zuki murdering you. Yeah, I mean, he's been putting in substantial amount of work and, like, just having that top laner that's been ahead and now he's built a team he's gonna be that much more of a threat in a split push now and just having to deal with two people at once it's like having to deal with the four man in the bot lane and having to worry about Riven in the top lane you have to now you're pretty much in a situation where they have to pick a fight where we just saw that when they have to force out a fight it doesn't go well for them anyway yeah, I say it's gonna be the tire on the top lane going and I don't know that anybody can really contest this level 16 Izuki just absolutely smashing down this inhibitor. Actually, he's trying to make a case for it, but they're gonna bring Rex Cyber. They're gonna commit two for this, but at the same time, once TFT notices that, that's gonna be pretty free pickings for them. Yeah, like they have Freeze Ray landed on. Inhibitor is down in the top lane. Suzuki might actually just try to run down here, but no, he's just causing a little more mayhem. Keeping oh, those Baron empowered minions to like slowly oh, creep in this 
into this space, and they have to send multiple people to clear this out. Urgot can't do it by himself. Dude, oh, there's the Orion ultimate! Lux ultimate trying to follow the stop line just come out from both sides. Warhog gonna set it up next, set up on the Caitlyn trap. Warhog has nowhere to go, he's dead to the Piero auto attack. And we're seeing in center of things, we're trying to get Morgana down, but that's and gonna be the double kill for Piero. There is nothing happening next. Azuki is in the center of the attention, trying to take the kill down. He finds Urgot, looking for the next, finds the stun onto that. Piero is gonna pick up the kill there, and they're gonna oh, run dear, right no. through. <laughs> and that's gonna be it. Team Vishako is gonna absolutely run over this game, and they are gonna clean out this series 2-1. Yeah, that was a really well executed early game from TFT. They definitely showed that even in the first game where it didn't go exactly as planned, it was just a fluke, couple of missteps here and there. They definitely showed that in this third game, they've got the picks and they have the champ pools to make this work no matter where or what side they're on. Pretty solid game, not gonna lie. <laughs> And we are here for a quick interview from our ABL uh, MVP top laner of this series. We're going to give it oh. to our boy, Azuki. Say hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> so, so I, <laughs> just give us give us a quick one, Azuki. How does it feel, uh, you know, coming in, very first game of the set? You know, I think Team Vistaco is going to be the, uh, the newcomers into this, into this uh, league. So how does it feel to have a pretty good game one? Uh, well, game one went pretty, pretty good for me. I was having some fun. I had like 15 CS a minute at one point. You know, after that, after that, like the series, dude, the series felt great. I meant after first series. I definitely said first game. Words <laughs> are hard. Words Swift, are you hard. do the words part. You're good at that. 
I'll do the words part. All right. After besides the first game, it seems like you guys have stuck with like the whole getting that early game and working off of you and like pro like um prowl in the jungle. Like seemed like every single game you guys were popping off, whether you guys won or lost. Like what's that dynamic for you guys? Well, I mean, you know, top jungle duo kind of smurf to be honest. Like we just top lane difference. We figured that out in game one. So then we we're just like, all right, let's just. Let's just go ahead and play top side and end this game. Yeah, this really seemed like to be the case. It's like you guys would have like some pretty solid comps, like had like the Caitlyn Morgan in the bot lane, but even then it was like, yeah, we're just gonna leave them do their own thing, and it was just a Azuki and jungle show at that point. I agree, I agree. All right. Another question. How do you think these guys line up? Like I don't know how like the other teams been scrimming, prepping. How do you guys think coming into this game, you guys would do? Do you think you guys would go 2 0? You guys think you're going to lose this game, et cetera, et cetera? I mean, we're going into every game just trying to improve, trying to become a better version of our team. Like scrims, um, not even going to lie, this roster's pretty pretty new. Um, so we just got our coach too, and we we're focusing. He's helping us a lot, and we're all improving together right now. So we kind of went into, into these games with a mindset of improvement rather than win or lose. And I think that's what set us up for success. I mean, it sounds good. Always. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh I need that. I need that. Please run me through the TFT comms. Run me through the mind of Azuki at that level one of game two. I need that. Oh, the, okay. The mind of Azuki. So as a Riven player, I'm hard, like I'm a hard geared into trying to kill someone level one, right? So I saw or we saw Rek'Sai as we walked into this pixel brush, and I said, wait, 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 let me try something. So I queue over the wall, and then we just wait a little, and I'm like, all right, what are we doing here? And then Karma walked up, and we just flew straight at the Rek'Sai. That's really what happened. Just going in, just going to town. Mm-hmm. Last but not least, I'm just going to say, you guys, next week, I did look up for you. You guys are going to be playing against Recon 5, it seems like, in the next week. Don't know if you guys know who they are, if you've played against them, if you know any of the players. But what are you guys, what are your thoughts in, like, prepping into the next game? And how do you think that might pan out for you guys? Um, mostly for prep, we're just going to clean up whatever happened in these games. Uh, we'll start scouting pretty soon so we can have a pretty good idea of what we're going to be running, what we're going to be doing, and how draft's going to go. But other than that, um, you know, recon who? <laughs> All right. Couldn't have said it better myself. But that being said, thanks, Suzuki, for that great series. Always nice to see a decent Riven out here. <laughs> and best of luck to you and TFT in your journey through the rest of the ABL in the coming weeks. And with Thank that, you. I guess we can end off the stream, Skyson. Yes, no, That's maybe so. That's all for me. I'm looking forward to the Tonzo Uzuki top lane battle next week. That's just me. Everything else, thanks for watching, guys, tonight. That's going to wrap it up. And that is going to be Team Fish Taco taking it 2-1 over No Fear Esports. Have a good night, everyone.